back to another video and today I wanted to mess with this crap and this is my original PSP 1000 back when I first started uh, modding and things like that and this one had the chrome housing and while I was changing it for the first time back in the day I messed up the UMD reader and uh, that was unfortunate just because of the fact that I just learned how to dump the UMD games and movies and stuff onto the memory card with a uh, pretty cool application. And hopefully I'll show you how to do that uh, later in the future. But for now, um, I just wanted to take a look at this and see what we got going on here. And... I've been kind of back and forth about this if I wanted to like fix it or if I wanted to uh, sell it or whatever but the parts should be good um, I've been moving it back and forth here and there closet to closet bin to bin and trying to keep all the parts together uh, so hopefully everything's in here I haven't messed around in about almost three four years in this little box this wooden box and this little wooden box my father gave it to me uh I, he just was like hey you can put your parts or whatever in this little thing i found so i was like oh thanks dad so yeah we're just gonna take a look at what's inside here and yeah here's the original faceplate the piano black it's always fun to mess around with stuff like this and we got a UMD it's broken and this is the Grand Theft Auto Liberty Stories hopefully that still works we got a slim battery pack we have the faceplate and what I was trying to do here was change the chrome to the white housing because I've always wanted a white PSP and at the time they're way too expensive so I ended up buying a brand new housing and yeah I kind of failed a little bit or I just kind of gave it up but here's the chrome UMD door here is the chrome battery cover or battery door I just want to be slow here taking this out because the LCD and there it is I've gotten this far which is pretty good so basically I have to put the faceplate on and I think I stopped because of the yep I remember now these got stripped these little screws on here they got stripped and I wasn't able to secure the reader. I mean, I really don't need the reader. That's less weight. I just want it just because of the weight, uh, of the feel of the PSP 1000 just feels good. Um, but yeah, let's put this aside. It's still in really good shape. Still brand new, the, the housing. Here's the UMD door. And the film is still over the silver part which is pretty cool and here's the faceplate and we still have the uh, lens cover on both sides <clears throat> very good and uh, what else is in this little bin we got a couple games Star Wars clones Clone Wars and this one is legend I don't know what that is got a couple of Pokemon cards no big deal and yeah here's the screws and everything to and you get the stickers also which is nice um, a PSP camera which I was gonna do a review on but it didn't work a little cable and oh here's the door I thought this was missing and a bunch of memory cards Oh, nice. This is what I needed. I was actually looking for these uh, little guys. I did find some, but I only found one of the Philips. This is very tiny, though. This might not work. Let me show you what else is in here. 
here is the original chrome yeah I was just back and forth I got lazy I didn't want to do it and I just kind of ended up saying ah screw it and then this piece and I believe this is the reason why uh, I completely stopped it wasn't the UMD door actually it was this piece the uh, the power cord or the power what this is where you plug it in from your AC adapter and it charges the battery and I believe that part is broken but it doesn't necessarily mean it's worthless because I can always charge the battery in another unit and just replace the battery here's the chrome d-pad and here are the trigger buttons I think I should have four two new ones and two used ones Oh, here's the, uh, for the analog, a sleeve, here's the, oh, I might have lost the white buttons too, yeah, here's the cover for, I'm not sure, if... yeah, we lost quite a few pieces, and if I can just find some replacement pieces, I will be happy with that and just run it that way. Um, okay, so I'm missing, I have a chrome square button, a black X button, a chrome triangle button, and ooh and a chrome circle button and that's all I need that's good that's enough for us to put it together and there's a bunch of screws couple batteries no big deal so yeah that is unfortunate that we lost the uh, white buttons maybe I can order them from China or Japan or whatever some replacement parts but for now we're just gonna work with what we got here alright so now we're gonna take a closer look and see what we can do to finish this little project that I started and I wanna begin on the back end uh, also there are there's this metal frame that goes over on the back of the UMD so it connects here and here and it basically holds the UMD. Um, this unfortunately doesn't have it anymore. So what I'll attempt to do is just pop in the UMD and be done with it from there. I think I had a hard time clicking this thing in in the past. But we'll see how we do right now. Um, one thing I'd like to do is remove this LCD, but I think I'm just going to have to, yeah, this is going to be a little tough here. I'm going to remove a few pieces. I'm going to remove this. Get this out of the way to get to the LCD real quick. I don't like to use plastic, like these little tools to pop open things. I've been repairing cell phones, smartphones, and portable devices for a decade now, and I never have a problem with just a regular flat tool like this one. And then inside, we're gonna see two little doors that are holding the ribbons you gotta be very careful now I use this part right I use the plastic piece there we go it's just a little door that holds down the uh, the ribbon cable but we gotta be very careful not to break that or else we're gonna be very screwed uh, let's see if we can get a better shot so you guys can take a look 
There we go. Nice. And I would like to take a screenshot here. Say cheese, everyone. Okay. Now, hopefully this video is not too long. But yeah, we are... Man, this is... I'm going to disassemble it a little bit just to kind of see where the hell I got lost. Now, there's going to be a couple screws on this metal frame. And some of these aftermarket shells, they just don't really... They're not very good when it comes to, you know, screwing on and off some of these uh, OEM screws onto the, onto the housing itself. Get this thing to... There we go. Yeah, there's like a little spring at the top, which opens and closes the UMD door. And there it is. There's the motherboard. And the reason why I had to get in here was just to make sure that the, the clips here are good. So there's one side. And the other side is right there Hopefully this still works, and I'm going to try to clean this. Uh, I haven't cleaned this in years. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I do hate dust under my screen. So how does that look, guys? Is that better? There we go. Let's put them back on. Before I do that, what the hell is this for? All right, guys, so that is it for this video. I was going to continue to install the faceplate, 
and just finish this PSP once and for all. But you know what? I came up with another idea. Instead, what I'll do for part two, guys, I will change the entire PSP. So what I'm going to do is basically take this housing and swap it out with this working PSP. Uh, this one charges. It has a good motherboard. And it also has all the parts that I need. And the UMD uh, reader is working. So on the next video, I'm basically just going to do that.